For I received from the Lord, this is in verse 23 of, verse, of chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. So he's telling, he's telling the Corinthians, he's, he's, he's giving some, the Corinthians some instructions about the Last Supper. He's teaching them. He's telling them some, something about this, you know. He says, The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, what are we, what are we supposed to remember when we remember him? What, what are we supposed to remember? Well, we need to go over to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, And we can see what we're to remember. I've got seven things wrote down here that we need to remember. The, the, seventh, uh, the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah starting, I'm going to start reading in chapter, in, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start reading in the first verse and then we'll get down to the verses I want. But I, I just want to read it all here. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was, dis he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men had hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Now this is what we need to start remembering. Surely he took our infirmities. Number one, he took our infirmities. He took our sicknesses. He bore our bruises. He carried our infirmities. He took them in His body. Every one of them, He took them for us. We need to remember that. When we take communion, we need to put that in remembrance. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, when we, take that, when we take that little cracker, that's something that we need to remember. We need to put that in remembrance. He took our infirmities. Amen. As we partake of that little cracker that represents His body, we need to remember He took my infirmities. Amen. We need to remember that. He tells us, remember this. Mm -hmm. Amen. Didn't He say that? He said, yeah. remember. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we. That's one of the things we're to remember. But we we take that little cracker. And it's become such a common thing. And I don't think God wants BWC. I don't think He wants us to let it get to be common around here. Yes, we take communion a lot around here. But I don't never want it to become common around here. I don't never want it to become a ritual around here. Amen. Amen. We do it a certain way sometimes, and then sometimes we change up. Just however he leads. Amen. You know, we was doing it every Sunday night for a while, and once a, once uh, the the mission Sunday, we still do it that way, and we may continue once we get back into doing the Sunday night worship. We may go back into taking it every Sunday night. I don't know, but we will not get into a ritual around here. Yeah. And every time that we take communion, we need to remember. He took our infirmities. Yes. Because He said, remember this. That's one of the things we need to remember. Mm -hmm. You say, brother, why are you hammering on this? I ain't. He is. Yeah. Evidently, He wanted you to get that. 
I know he's wanting me to get it. He's wanting me to get it. I'm wanting to get it. Amen. I believe when we ever, if we could ever grab a hold of, if we could ever really grab a hold of the real reality that what he really did for us. Amen. Amen. We can walk in the victory we've never walked in before. Amen. Amen. Because he took it. We don't have to. That's right. That's right. We need to remember that. Number two, he carried our sorrows. <coughs> Yet we considered him. Number three, we considered him stricken by God. Smitten by him and afflicted. He was stricken for us. He was afflicted for us. He was smitten for us. He took the beatings for us. He took it all for us. Number four, he was pierced for my transgressions. He had no transgressions. He had done nothing wrong. That's right. That's right. We're the ones that done something wrong. But he took the punishment for it. He took my transgressions. <clears throat> he was crushed for my iniquities. Iniquities. What is iniquities? Somebody tell me what's iniquity. Same thing as sin. Yeah. Huh? It's same thing it's as sin. habitual sin. Yeah. He was punished. To bring us peace. So that we could have peace. He was punished for it. Are you hearing me tonight? Mm -hmm. That's what we need to remember. When we partake. Of the cracker. And the juice. We need to remember that. Amen. It is a little different than what I preached it before. Ain't it? Mm hmm. He was wounded that we could be healed. Yeah. It says, by his wounds we were healed. First Peter 2 24 says, by his wounds we are healed. Amen. Amen. We need to remember that. When we when we when shame passes it out after a while, we need to remember all of this. Because we're going to read that while some more in 1 Corinthians there. And we're going to see what Paul is telling the Corinthians. It's the reason that we need to remember this. Amen? Amen. He was wounded that we can be healed. All of our iniquities was laid on him. Amen? That's Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. I'll read. Surely, 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 surely he took my infirmities and he carried my sorrows. Yet I considered him stricken by God and smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for my transgressions. He was crushed for my iniquities. The punishment that brought me peace was upon him. And by his wounds, I am healed. All that sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Everybody's sin, every sin that you've ever committed, God laid it on him when he hung him on the cross. Because there had to be a sacrifice. There had to be an offering. Jesus, Jesus became our Passover lamb. See, the, back in Exodus chapter 12, Verses 22 through 23. It 
talks about the Passover lamb and the blood of the Passover lamb being put on the doorpost. Moses said, Take a branch of hyssop, dip it into the bowl, into the blood. <coughs> Let me start back up at 21. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a branch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. Now, now, I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to say something in a minute that the Lord showed me a while ago as I was preparing this. He said, put it on the top and on both sides of the door frame. That's three. Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put it on the, on the top and, and both sides of the door frame. In other words, apply the blood there. Amen? Amen. You follow me? Uh, on the top and both sides of the door frame. Not one of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway. And he will not permit. Do you hear that? He will not permit. See, he he didn't do the striking. No. Nope. There's someone with him that's doing the striking. He will not permit the destroyer. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the same destroyer mm -hmm. that Jesus is talking about in John 10.10. 10. That's talking. That's right here. Yeah. It's the same destroyer. Yep. Yeah. He's the destroyer here to enter your house and strike you down. He will because he says, "When I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, the destroyer will not be permitted to come in. He will pass over. He will have to pass you by." Praise God. Amen. Praise God. The blood, <clears throat> let's see, the lamb is a type and shadow of Jesus. Yes. That was the Passover lamb for them. They celebrate, I think they may still celebrate the Passover. That was the Passover lamb. Jesus became that Passover lamb for us. Once and for all. Mickey touched on this last week. Once and for all. The veils ripped when Jesus it, it don't have to be a sacrifice anymore. Right. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He took it all. He did it all. What the what the blood of sheep and goats and bulls couldn't do, Jesus did. Yes, amen. His amen. blood did. Amen. The blood is a type and shadow of Jesus' blood. We apply the blood of Jesus to our hearts, our Minds and our souls. Our hearts, our minds, and our souls on each side of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. All around us. When you apply that blood, you're covered with the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 You have the blood of Jesus on you. That's right. And when the destroyer comes by, if you're still in the house, if you're still under the blood, yeah. he has to go by. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I like that. It's good. Then we must stay under the cover of the blood, or the destroyer can take us out. If we get out from underneath the blood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, things can go well for a long time and then we get to doing our own thing and we forget about God. It's just like going outside. It's just like it's just like what the children of Israel, the people of Israel that night, if they would have got... See, it's a walk of faith. Mm -hmm. 
And if they would have got this, decided, oh, there ain't nothing to this, and, and, and decided and walked outside the walked outside those doors under out from behind the blood, they would have been in free range. And there's nothing that the Lord could have done for them and the destroyer could have taken them down that night. Yeah, that's right. Because he said, you apply the blood to the doorpost and he said, stay in the house. Yeah. It's just like him telling us, you've been washed in the blood of Jesus, now stay there. Yeah. yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Stay there. I've, I've shed my blood for you. Now stay there. Amen. Don't get out there in his territory. Yeah. Stay out of his territory. Amen. Praise God. Let's go back to Corinthians. <clears throat> this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. See, that's what we're remembering. We're remembering His death. We're remembering His sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Just like that lamb had to, be, had to be sacrificed, it had to be killed. And the Lord also did, I didn't read that in there, but He also told them, He said not anything, He said make sure that every bit of the lamb is, con is consumed by morning. If there's any left, burn it. They had to consume the whole sacrifice. Some of you have heard me say this before, we're leaving a lot of sacrifice on the table. Yeah. yeah. Amen. We're leaving a lot of His sacrifice on the table mm -hmm. because we're not partaking of all that He did for us. Oh, we'll gladly partake of, oh, you know, the, the ticket to heaven. Like Pastor Katie was talking this morning, you know, there's a lot of people that's going to get up there and they're going to say, well, why can't I be up there where them others are? Which, well, all you did was, you know, you got the salvation ticket and you didn't partake of nothing else. You sat there on the pew the whole time, you know. Mm -hmm. You didn't do nothing else. Come on. Unfortunately, you did get up here and you did make it in the, in the gate just by the skin of your teeth, you know. Yeah. Because you kept toying around, you had one foot in the world, you had, you know, you kept you kept trying to dilly dally around out there, you almost fell off the cliff several times, you know. Just the mercy and grace of God that you didn't. Come on. You know. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Amen. Now, so many people believe that whenever we're talking about the unworthy, in an unworthy manner, that it's talking about if you're in sin. Yeah, it is talking about if you're in sin. But that's not the only thing, and it's not the most important. The most important thing that he's talking about, Christians do this all the time and don't remember, don't realize it. They do, they, they partake, they partake of the of the communion in an unworthy manner. Come on. You say, how, how can you say that? Because they don't remember, they don't recognize, they don't <coughs> accept. They just they do it in a it's a, it's a ritual. And it's just a ritual. It's just a thing to do. No That's an unworthy manner. Yeah. Now, they're not really recognizing that it is the body and the blood of Jesus. Yeah. They're not, they're not, they're just, they're, to them it's just a cracker and a, and, a, and a little sip of wine or a little sip of grape juice. Depending on what denomination or church you're in. You know? Yeah. That's an unworthy manner. If you're in sin, one thing you need to do is you need to repent. Yeah. You need to repent. You know, it says examine yourself. You need to examine yourself and repent. And then run and grab you a glass full of this and a cracker. And run to it. 
Repent first, but then run to this. Yeah. Because you see, He made you worthy. That's right. And if you're in an unworthy state for, from sin, get out of it. Yeah. Partake of this and real and remember that He took your sins. Yeah. You, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Are you here? He took our sins. Okay, let's go on. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. See, I just said that. Examine yourself. Examine where you at with the Lord. Where's your thoughts about this? Are you remembering? Are you taking it all in? Are you recognizing the body? Or are you just nonchalantly, it's just a thing to do? Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing yeah. the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Without recognizing. Do you see? When you don't recognize it, when you do it in nonchalantly, Oh well, it's just a, it's just a communion, you know. Oh well, it's it's the thing we do. We do this every Sunday night. We do this once a month and on Mission Sundays, you know. Some churches do it every service, just depending on. And it's become, you know, to to lots of dumb de, 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 denominations. I'll get it out. It's become a a ritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With no life. And they're drinking damnation to them. To their sense because they're not recognizing the Lord's body. Now listen to what Paul says here in his last, the, the last part. It's not his last statement, but it's all I need to read for this. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. It's because you're not. See, he's teaching the he's teaching he's teaching the Corinthians. And he's telling them, you know, he said, he's, he's telling them, just like I'm, I'm doing tonight, he's telling them what they need to do when they take this. And he said, he said, do this in remember, you know, remembrance. And he said, don't do it in an unworthy manner and recognize the body. And if you don't, you're going to be drinking judgment on yourself. And this is why, this is why what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. And this is why churches are full of people today that are, have, have no victory, have no no freedom, have no have no deliverance. Amen. Amen. It's because we're not recognizing the body of Christ like we should when we partake of that. Well, every time. Amen. I'm just as guilty as the next man. I'm teaching this because I want us to get a hold of this. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I'm not, I'm not up here teaching this trying to put some condemnation on you, you know. I know CP's got, he's dealing with sickness. I deal with pain in my body. Every, I dare say everyone in here is dealing with pain in our body and stuff. But you, are you hearing me tonight? We, if we can ever get to that point where it clicks in our heart. Yeah. It clicks in our heart. There's people. Was it a Sid Roth? Yeah, it was a Sid Roth show. And this guy went in here and, and, and these people were trying to get this man demon possessed. And this guy was, he, he just, the communion just meant something to this guy. And they was trying to get this guy delivered. And he said, where's the communion cup? And they brought him the communion cup, and this guy, he went to pouring the wine down him and, and got the guy delivered with the communion. 
Yeah. I'm probably kind of messing it up, but it's something like it, you know, because mm -hmm. I don't remember it clearly. But, but anyway, he, you know, he, 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 he got the guy delivered with the communion. Wow. <laughs> and awesome. I seen that on Sid Raw. I can't, it was, but it was really awesome. But I want you to understand when you partake of communion tonight, and when you partake of communion in the future, because we're going to continue to do it because we believe here at BWC, we believe that, we're, that there's healing power. Yes. There's healing power. Just like, just like we believe that there's healing power flows into you whenever I lay my hands on you. It's, it's by faith. You put your faith in, you, it's, it's by faith that you believe that that little cracker represents his body. Because his word says it does. Yeah. He told his disciples that. That was the last, this is the Lord's Supper, it's the Lord's Last Supper. He said, this bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we just went over what we're to remember. All of those seven things were to remember. He did all of that for us. Amen. We're to remember that. You see, over in Psalms chapter uh, 105, I believe it's 105, yeah, 105 verses 37, he says, He brought he brought them out of it. He brought out Israel laden with silver and gold, and from among their tribes not one was feeble. Out of millions, I don't remember how many it was come out of there, men and women. They had been in there for 400 years in slavery. And they all had to partake of that lamb, the Passover lamb that night, and put the blood on the doorpost. And he told them to, to elude the Egyptians. And he, they brought out their gold and their silver. They came out of their rich. They were not slaves anymore. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, uh, Egypt was gladly given, here, take it. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Take this gold. Take this silver. Whatever. Just go. And he says not one of them was sick among the tribes. I dare say you cannot get 600,000, you can't get a million people together today without 10 to 20 percent of them going to be very feeble. Yeah. yeah. Not one of them. And I'm talking about these people who had been under bondage, they had been, they had been under hard, strict labor. Not one of them was feeble. When they ate of that lamb, they, put, they had to partake of the whole sacrifice. They couldn't leave none of it unconsumed. Takes me back to, we leave a lot of the sacrifice unconsumed. Yeah. We're leaving part of the lamb on the table. Are you hearing me tonight? Yeah. We need to quit doing that. Yeah. We need to partake of the whole thing. Because it's all included. Amen. Most of you heard me tell the story about the guy on the ship. Who hadn't heard the story about the guy on the ship? Very several of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell it because <clears throat> this guy, he saved his money, he wanted passage to America. So he had saved and saved and saved and he finally got enough and he bought him a bunch of crackers and sardines and he got him a ticket and he got on board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he loves sardines and crackers. <laughs> and he got on board. And he got settled in and the ship set sail and uh, the purser come by and said, uh, Mr. So and so, are you going to partake of supper with us tonight? No, I'm going to eat my crackers and sardines. <laughs> well, 
Okay. So he goes to his room and he eats his crackers and sardines. The next day at lunch, a person comes by, Mr. So-and-so, are you going to partake of lunch with us today? No, I'm going to eat my crackers and sardines. And so he eats his crackers and sardines. And he goes all the way across the voyage like that, several, several days, however long it took. But back then it took a long time, six or seven weeks, I think, to sail across there. The whole time, you know, he's eating his crackers and sardines. The very last day, the person comes to him and says, well, Mr. So-and-so said we got one last meal before we going to dock and you disembark. Are you going to take the last meal for us? And he dug in his pocket and come out with a little change and he counted it and he said, you know, he said, I think I will. I think I got just enough for one meal. He said, well, Mr. So-and-so, you don't have to buy it. It's all included in the ticket. <laughs> the whole time he had sailed across there eating sardines and crackers and he could have been eating high on a hog in there. Yeah. It was all included in the ticket. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying it's all included. Yeah. It's more to it than just a ticket in the heaven. Yeah. Everything that we need to remember, it's all included. Amen. He bore our sickness. He carried our infirmities. By his stripes, we are healed. He became poor that we could become rich. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Amen. It's all included. It's time we start partaking of it. Amen. It's time that we start acting like children of the King. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We're not servants. We're children of the King. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.